and welcome to Ian Blackwood, Canadian musician and actor known for being the vocalist slash guitarist of the Toronto-based punk band, The Artist Life, and for playing Kyle Bateman on the CTV team hit Instant Star. He now fronts the rock and roll band, This Is The Noise, and is the technician for the band Walk Off The Earth. He also owns a recording studio called Lime Green Studio in Ontario. So huge welcome to Ian Blackwood. Thank you for being here with us. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. That's a, a Wikipedia bio, is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, a couple little things. This is the noise. We, we disbanded a few years. Well, a good, uh, I guess like five or six years ago. But, um, and oh, I used, wow. Yeah, yeah, and I used to be obviously one of the techs for Walk Off, which I no longer am because, um, you know, life moves on. And uh, obviously, I'm, my, I'm, I love my family and I love my sister, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Other things in my life happen, but um, yeah, great. Uh, and wow, the, the CTV, Kyle Bateman, I love that you, uh, that's some of the best memories I've ever had. We can talk about that kind of stuff, like being on set and being an actor and stuff. That was, that was such a fun TV show to be on. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and we should definitely get into what you're doing now. So sorry about that. No, don't be sorry at all. That's, that's, that's a, 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 it is a bio that exists and it's just I've um, been doing other things since. So that's all. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, So to start us off, can you tell us a little bit about what your role in the industry is and how you got into that role, just to give our viewers a little bit of a background on what you do? Wow. So I guess at the current, in the current state of the world um, and in the last few years, I've become more of a music producer than more than anything. Um, I haven't, I haven't really played in a band in a few years, but um, there was a time when I was producing bands pretty frequently and having them in, in my, in my home studio um, that changed a couple of years back when um, things started kind of really picking up. My wife and I, we own a wedding photography company as well. So we're all very, we're very artist based. That's how we make our living. And that's how I've always really made a living. Um, other than when I was, you know, a teenager and working the odd jobs in my twenties, working construction and stuff. But uh, yeah, so as it stands now, I still very much love producing music. And as you can see, I have, you know, the studio behind me, home studio. Um, there's like a million guitars right over here, but you can't see it, but maybe I can pivot the camera later on. You can see there's a rack of guitars here and um, still very much into writing music, working with different types of artists if I get the chance. Um, but more so working on singer, singer songwriter kind of stuff nowadays, more than, um, more so than, than full band production. But there was a time, especially when I, when I started my studio, back and I guess it was about 2012 um excuse me and uh I started kind of um having a lot of bands over and working and producing them and working on songwriting and stuff like that so but still very much into the uh songwriting part of and producing I love producing bands I love you know um especially young bands I love meeting you know new new young talented artists and uh learning about their story and learning about you know type of music they, they they're playing the type of music they want to play and the genres they want to get into and and then I love kind of like peeling back the layers there and seeing how deep I can go as a producer with bands is one of the fun things that I like to do so for sure very cool um so can you tell us like w- the podcast is geared towards emerging and young artists um and, and since you're focusing on producing right now what are like what are some of the things you're looking in artists and when you're getting together to work on a project or a song um what are some of the things that you are are um looking for in that particular project and what might you take on Great question um like as it goes for me right now I'm I'm really like I love songs like I'm a song Mm. I spent a lot of time in my youth, you know, I played in a lot of punk rock bands and I grew up in punk rock scene and getting that angst out of me and not really caring necessarily about songs and structure and just about like getting out and playing shows. And that it was actually more of a, for me growing up as a teenager, um, I grew up in Burlington and the Burlington music scene was, was um, very heavily kind of community based. And it was more so about kind of hanging out and going to shows Mm -hmm. more so than really the, really the music, like, it was like the, the culture was kind of, and I think kind of punk rock is one of those things. Like we're not necessarily like, I don't know. You think of the bands like the clash or the sex pistols. They're not, I mean, maybe, maybe more so the clash, but they're not necessarily revered for their, their music per se as maybe more of their movement. And um, I found that growing up in Burlington, there was this, just this like emo punk rock kind of movement when we all grew up and we would just kind of, you would just go to a show. Like you wouldn't like, you wouldn't necessarily just go and hang. I mean, we would still like hang out as teenagers and go to like plazas and skateboards and stuff, but a lot of the times you were going to shows or you're at shows. And if you were at a show, you were probably playing a show. So um, and that kind of stuff 
really interested me when I was young, but then as I grew, grew up now, I'm, you know, I'm approaching my forties and, uh, I've really become a song type person. I really appreciate the, the craft of songwriting and it's such a, it's such a hard craft. Like it really, like when it really comes down to it, actual like songwriting, I'm, you know, lyrics are one thing, but melodies and top line and, and catchy choruses, like stuff like that. Um, a lot of the stuff that's kind of coming, that's been coming out of Nashville for decades now, like this, the writers and the, the artists that come out of there, I really love that stuff now. And that's kind of what I look for nowadays. If, if there is an artist approaching me and asking me about if I'm interested in producing or, um, you know, interested in, in, in doing songwriting camps and stuff like that. For me, it's, um, let's hear, like, let's hear your best top line or let's hear your best chorus mm -hmm. and, and, um, kind of go from there, you know? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. I wanted to ask a little bit about um, your view of the music industry. So this podcast is geared toward young musicians, educating young musicians. In what ways have you seen the music scene change and adapt since you started as a young musician? And do you think young musicians today face different unique challenges than you did or some of the same things? Another great question. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, again, um, for me, what it felt like the music industry that I kind of grew up in that, that, that well, that I've sort of thought it, what it was, was, you know, very live music um, based, very instrument based, very um, sort of um, show act, like interactive show wise. Nowadays, I feel like, and I mean, this is just an advancement. Like, I mean, I, I think of studios too. Like I always think about, I, like I've got state of the art equipment right behind me. I would have killed to have this stuff when I was 16, mm -hmm. you know, I was recording on little tape decks, four track analog tape decks. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, trying to, yeah. Like, Me too. To, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know and, and, but here, there's nothing wrong with it. It was actually a lot of fun and it was really cool to learn and, and kind of understand and strip back audio for what it is. And um, you gain that, you sort of educate yourself and you gain that respect for, for what, you know, analog audio really is. Mm -hmm. And then now you you know, flash forward now, like, 20 years and you know i can i can be recording a, a vocal and then sending it to amsterdam and then they're sending it to la and then it's all in state-of-the-art equipment at my house whereas that really didn't exist for even for for my um me being like a grandpa millennial that didn't really exist even for us there was digital studio sort of but they didn't even really have what's called you know i use pro tools or they didn't have um you know logic and, and cubase and stuff like that so um yeah i think um I think the the cool thing about the modern age and the modern tech is we're seeing from what I believe and hearing these incredibly young talented producers and songwriters because I don't know if it's if it's just cuz they're they're stuck in their homes or they're like you know like Billie Eilish and Phineas or brother like you've got you know a, a team like that just creating some of the like most awesome art and uh, they're doing it at home and it's just like, it's really cool. So, you know, but on the flip side, there's like this, so you, you know, I think this, the generation, the Gen Z and stuff, I think you guys have, um, you, you have more hands, like you have, you, you have the, uh, I guess the tools available to you a lot more than kind of maybe we did. And even I'm sure like generations, like, you know, um, Gen X and stuff like that, like they barely had any type of hardware, computer hardware and stuff like that at all, really. But so I think the advancements there are great because you, you know, you got, you got audio at the, the touch of a button and you've got, you know, production capabilities, you know, right there in front of you. Um, but on the flip side, you've got people that are honing it really, really well. So you're seeing very young producers and young songwriters writing hits. And it's really cool because in a different way, like maybe not necessarily in a full garage band way, but maybe in a, in a sitting home demo sense, they're working on top line and working on choruses. And it's really cool because I didn't do stuff like that at my age. At my age, I was like either skateboarding or I was just jamming with the guys in the garage or, you know, whatever. Um, and just making noise and trying to figure out a cool tune. But now I feel like there's songwriting dissection happening a lot more in, in the younger age. And I think it's really cool because I think we're starting to see, it's, it's like kind of like, um, I equate it to kind of pro athletes. We're seeing a lot of extreme pro athletes now where like, you know, even like shows like cheer and stuff like that. Like you watch these athletes, like they, they work themselves to the core and into exhaustion. Whereas like, I feel like maybe there's musicians and producer types that are working their brains and they're working their, their talents to the core as well. And maybe to the point where, you know, we're seeing geniuses at like 15, 16, even younger, because they're just honing the craft so much more. And they have, you know, they have ability to, to track 
to, to, to multi-track more and to learn about effects and compression and reverb and delay and, and to learn about songwriting and, 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 and structure and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like, that's one of the big things I see is, is the, the younger generation, the fact that they've got um, their hands on higher tech, high, like much higher tech and better tech, more advanced um, but it also keeps guys like me on my toes because, you know, a friend of mine, his name is Zach Gerber. He's a really young, um, I mean, I say really, he's, he's 28. He's a producer from uh, Kitchener, Cambridge area. He's actually one of the uh, head technicians for Walk Off the Earth as well. But he runs his own studio too. I mean, the guy's 28 years old. He runs his own studio. He's an incredible mixer now too. And he's becoming a, a budding producer and a better, you know, much, you know, he keeps becoming a better songwriter as he works. But he's young and like his ears are insane. Like his ears when he's 40 are going to be nuts. So it's like, it's really cool to see um, this, like this younger sort of like active. I still, cause like a lot of people say, Oh, rock and roll's dead. You know, I don't think it ever is dead. And I, I, I never thought it was, I just thought it's evolving. You know, I see the music, I see the evolution of music personally. Like I don't, I don't see it as a negative thing. I, you can, you can look at it, I suppose that way, but um, I just don't think that's conducive to, you know, moving forward. Mm-hmm. I love, I love that view there. Music is constantly evolving. It's what it's always doing. Hopefully <laughs> I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Cause we don't have the opportunity to have an actor on here very often. Okay. And, um, I did watch you on instant star long time ago and uh but recently i actually i watched out the short uh, i watched the short film that you um wrote and directed and produced um and acted in that you did over um the first lockdown and man it's so funny it was it's awesome it was very clever and subtle and hilarious and i thought it was lovely so um thanks for putting more art into the world yeah. Okay. So I want to know what came first, acting or music? And then I have like a lot more questions about the acting world, but hit us with that first. Cool. Uh, well, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Um, that little short, it was funny. Um, the, uh, what came first? Oh, okay. I'll answer what came first. So, so music came first and, um, mm-hmm. we'll talk about the short after, but, uh, I really appreciate that you watched it. Thank you very much. You guys, it's called, uh, uh, it's over and you can watch it on my YouTube channel. Um, Check it out. Uh, yeah, music came first. Music was something I started. I started playing music when I was about 11. I started playing guitar. And uh, my dad, I grew up in a musical home. Um, as you know, for those who don't know, my sister is Sarah Black, which she plays in a tiny, tiny Canadian band called Walk Off the Earth. And uh, my eldest sister, Jen, she actually played in a punk rock band called The Creep Show, which Sarah actually played in too. There's this whole... It's a, it's a rabbit hole of uh, Blackwood music that people could go on YouTube and spend hours and go find out the, the, you know, with our, all our musical pasts. And, but uh, yeah, it was music first and started with guitar. Um, my dad, uh, I wanted an electric guitar when I was 11. And excuse me, he said, well, you can't have an electric guitar, but um, if you play my acoustic guitar and you happen to like it, and if you, if you can learn, he gave me a, a, a book of chords. I, th- I think the book was from the 60s. It was like tarnished and like discolored and it just had all the major and minor um, bar chords and uh, regular uh, chords. So I learned those and I learned them quite fast because I was quite inclined and quite excited to, to get good. And I really, honestly, I just, it was like Wayne's World. I just wanted a white like a white guitar i just wanted a bright white electric guitar like i was i I was that guy i was just like oh like uh, obviously i wanted a fender but i was never gonna get a fender like my dad was a police officer my mom my mom was a stay-at-home mom so there was just no obviously and i was you know i was 11 i was working papers there's no way i was ever going to afford a fender stratocaster but um a really fun story about how i got my first electric guitar which i actually have and i'll show you guys i'll pull it out in a second um uh, I was 13, or I was 12, sorry, 12. So it was about two years after I started really learning to play guitar. Um, I asked for one for Christmas, and I, I don't know, um, Maddie, you're probably too young for this. Lisa, you might remember Consumers Distributing. I don't know if you remember Consumers Distributing, but it's a, they were like a weird, um, like, pseudo-mall store you would go to. You'd get a catalog, and you would go there, and they would never have anything, but you'd have to order it, and then it would show up in like a month. So... I, I always got the catalog for Christmas and they, you know, for some reason there was an electric guitar available at consumers distributing. I'm sure it was terrible. I asked for that exact guitar just because I wanted an electric guitar, but my dad had played, my dad grew up playing classical um, guitars. He had, he has still to this day has some really nice guitars and he knew that, that that guitar was a piece of junk that I was asking for for Christmas. So uh, 
um, do you, are you girls are f- familiar with um, A Christmas Story? It's a movie, an old, old movie about a young boy gets a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like my all-time favorite Christmas movie. Anyway, my, uh, and my dad always knew that. And um, it's been my favorite Christmas movie since I was like six or seven years old. And um, oh, yeah, it's, it's like one of the best. Um, I've actually been to the house in Cleveland, but anyway, like to the actual the set where they, they shot all the exteriors. But um, so for Christmas one year, he, uh, I asked for this I, I guitar and then, you know, we unwrapped all our presents and there was no guitar. And I was just like, oh, well, you know, whatever. And it's just another Christmas. And maybe when I'm 13, I'll get a guitar. And my dad, he pulled me aside. He goes, hey, there's, there's something upstairs. Um, Santa said he couldn't, he couldn't carry it down when he, because apparently Santa came through. The, we didn't have a chimney, but apparently he came through windows or something. But um, he told me to go upstairs and check the, like the, one of the beds or whatever. And um, sure enough. There was this uh, white <laughs> electric guitar in a box. I opened the box and it was like, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, wow. And you still have it. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, and yeah, it was, um, oh, it was just, and I, I strummed it and it was just like, oh, and then I immediately started playing like Nirvana and Green Day and they got me a little tiny practice amp that sounded terrible, but it was the greatest. <laughs> Thing. And honestly, I, if I wasn't at school and wasn't doing, sometimes doing homework, I was playing guitar and I was playing it loudly and just the game cranked on my little five watt practice amp, just sounding terrible, but I loved every second of it. So, yeah. Music first. Acting Amazing. came into my twenties. And so how did you get into acting then? So acting was weird because I was never that type. You know, there are, I feel like there's types, like there's the type A type of uh, actor type people who are, I, I call always on and they're always like, you know, always revved up and, and you know, I, I do like a good conversation. I can go on forever and I can talk your ear off. So I, I, I get that. But for the most part, being an actor, it's like when you really meet actor types, in my opinion, anyway, they're quite, um, quite ready at all times. And I feel like I'm not necessarily that type of person, but I've always been interested in, in, um, in like film and TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just, I love, I love cinematography too. I took photography when I was in high school and I love cinematography. So that was another thing too, that I loved about the whole Mm. i like yeah i I like right for me it's like i can really appreciate great writing because a lot of people think it's just actors or directors but they don't realize that usually most of the time it's the writing the writing is really it's like a good song Mm. like bob dylan wasn't the greatest singer but man was he one of the best songwriters ever you know what i mean like it's just writing to me is one of the most important bits and i think it's sometimes not as um you know recognized and respected but um yeah i don't know i just uh I got this great idea after I'd been playing. I, I, I joined my first touring band when I was 18. I graduated high school at 18. I didn't do um, OAC. I just did my OSSD. And then I, as soon as I graduated, I joined a band. They were a few years older than me. And we directly went on Warp Tour in 2001. And we were playing with Rancid and playing with Jimmy Eat World and um, opening for like Me First and the Gimme Gimmies and playing with bands like AFI and Anti-Flag. These are all like, you know, California coastal kind of punk rock bands. Um, and we were on a record label called Fuel by Ramen, which... Um, Paramore, I think we're on right when they started, but this was back in 2001. So yeah, we're going again. We're going, going back almost, geez, almost 20 years. But um, <laughs> oh man! But um, I, I immediately got out of high school and joined a band. So it was like, and I was always playing in bands in high school too. Like I would play bars when I was 15, and then we we were allowed to play our set, but then we would have to leave, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then um, I don't know. It was it was just weird, like after trying this trying this musical thing and going on tour and you know making a bit of pocket change and making a little, enough money to kind of like you know sometimes buy some food or like you know put you know i don't know like pay car insurance or something um but obviously having a job on the side working warehouses and stuff like that i decided that i would try another uh <laughs> another interesting industry which is acting and film which you know my mother <laughs> always said she was like you're nuts like what are you doing like because i never wanted to be i I, I just don't want to be in a box, you know, I could never be like, you know, stuck in a box. I always wanted to be, you know, I don't know if it's just like a, an artist thing or like, you know, your self punishment, but um, yeah, <laughs> with acting, it just started. I, I actually, so what I did was um, I was in a band for a, for a little bit and then I decided, Hey guys, listen, I'm, we toured Europe. It was really cool. We had a, a German label and we toured Europe. It was a lot of fun, but the band itself really was kind of at a stalemate and I didn't really see it going too much further. And I knew I wanted to go to, um, post-secondary. So I ended up going to um, uh, Capilano College in, in Vancouver. So um, for film. Oh, cool. That's where I went to school. <laughs> you went to Cap? Yeah. 
I went to the Seashelt campus. I don't know if they still had it when you went, but oh. yeah, they had so we when I when I registered for the film um, program, I got accepted, but I was in an overage and they said, listen, there's about 25 of you that are in overage and we're thinking about opening the Seashell campus to have the same program. Would you be interested? And I said, well, yeah, like I don't, it doesn't matter if I live in North Van or in Seashell. Like I don't, I just want to go and, and learn film. So, um, so I, I took the position anyway and I moved out there for a year and then I did that. Um, I actually ended up leaving early. I only did a semester, but it was, um, but it was awesome. Like I knew what I wanted to do. The, my professors were amazing. The students were incredible. The projects were so much fun. And I already knew, like I was a bit, I was in my, in my earlier twenties and I was going to school with 17, 18 year olds who you could tell were like, this is perfect for them because they don't really know what they want to do. I'd already toured in a bunch of bands. I'd been in the music industry already on the punk rock sort of rock and roll side of things. So I'd seen that type, you know, in the world. And I knew that I, I kind of knew okay, I need an agent and I want to be an actor. So going to the post-secondary thing was awesome. Learning about camera editing, cinematography, uh, a little bit of screenwriting, acting, stuff like that. That was awesome. And I, to this day, as you saw in the short film, I use all of those things, especially, you know, mm-hmm. shooting all films and, and lighting and stuff like that. But I already knew what I wanted to do. So to, each semester was like five or six grand. So I didn't really want to spend all that money twice. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go back home. And I, 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 uh, I, was, I was a construction worker, so I saved up all the money myself and um, my dad, my mom co-signed so I could get an extra loan so I didn't have to work while I was out there for the few months so I could just like focus on school. But um, yeah, it was uh, after, as soon as I got home from, from, uh, from film school, honestly, it was only about six months later, I got a principal agent and then I landed two commercials and then I landed Instant Star. And Instant Star was really cool because we were in the last two episodes of the first season and we didn't have any dialogue. And then we had dialogue in our auditions, which I totally bombed, by the way. Like, I was awful. Like, it was, I was so nervous. And, uh, well, obviously, I mean, it's auditions. I'm nervous all the time. I've been doing it for 15 years, and I'm still nervous. Like, I have a self-tape in a couple of days, and I get nervous. And I shoot them at home, and I get nervous. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was, uh, I bombed. But they, they loved me, and they loved the fact that, like, the cool thing about Instant Star was they hired musicians, too, which I was, I was just in love with, like, I don't know about you, you ladies, but when I watch like a musical type show and you can tell the actors don't actually play, I can catch that. So mm-hmm. totally. <laughs> and, and it, not, not that I'm judging because not all the, not everyone can do these things, like be a musician, also be an actor, be a plumber, be a whatever. But I think the fact that the show, they went a little above and beyond. And I like that they hired musicians, the actors who could sing, actors who could play and um, actors who'd been in bands. And, and that really, I think it really showed. It was too bad. The show should have went much longer, like a few more seasons. And it definitely could have. But um, yeah, I always, that's what I loved about the show is that they, they, they hired actual musicians, which I, I thought was really cool.